Hey guys, how's it going? So on this lovely rainy night in Sydney, I'm gonna to put together a new little, really decked out and planted uh, Exoterra green tree python enclosure. Stick around, hope you enjoy the video. So I do have this lovely setup for one of my little green trees here. Um, however, I do need to fill in some space inside my Exoterra rack and this tank being white, I'm going to pull it apart just because it doesn't match all the black tanks and everything that I've got. It's also got a little bit of water damage to it, so before it gets any worse, let's put him into a glass terrarium where you can't really damage anything with water. And uh, yeah, anyway, stick around for the video. I'm going to really deck it out once I've pulled all this apart and gotten him out nice and safely. And I'll put together another terrarium. So the plan is to use this 60 by 45 by 45 exoterror enclosure and put it into this rack right where the thick tail geckos are. Thick tail geckos for the time being are going to go on top of the green tree python there. But I'm really making a conscious effort of turning this all into exoterror enclosures because I really think it would just look really neat just being all the one type of enclosure. And I've got enough nozzles and everything now to lick it all up to the Miss King system which I've got. So it'd be awesome to just have like a fully decked out planted terrarium wall, all matching enclosures. Um, even though I've only just kind of put a couple of those together, I'm going to be selling them on to uh, a work colleague. Um, and we're going to redo the gecko one. So I've got a new one of those, uh, the 45 by 45 by 60 tall enclosures there. And I just need to get another one of them to fill in that bottom space there. And then I just need my cubes. So I'm trying to sort out a couple of those as well at the moment. But anyway, I digress. Green tree python, just going in there for now. I'm gonna get rid of that enclosure right now. So I've blacked out the sides. This is just going to help uh, the frogs either side that are going to be living next to the green tree python not see the green tree python because the last thing you want to do is scare the hell out of your little frogs. Um, I'm actually going to try a different background technique for this cage. I'm not sure if anyone's done this before. I'm sure somebody probably has. I actually went to Bunnings and bought a cheap queer peat, well, queer doormat. I'm basically just going to put that in there as is because I reckon the plants are going to love grasping onto that and it's quite porous so they can dig their roots and stuff into it. So I reckon that might be a good go to get uh, get some plant growth on the back wall of the, the terrarium. I um, don't really have time to kind of silicon into place at the moment but what I will probably end up doing is just using a few uprights to essentially just kind of pin it into place. And green tree pythons aren't exactly going to you know, launch in behind it or anything like that and I'll have a bunch of substrate at the bottom to hold it all together so Anyway, I'm going to pull apart the green tree python enclosure now and get him out of there and uh, start putting everything together a little bit more permanently. Right, so I've gone ahead and I've just used some aggregate as a bit of a drainage layer. Put some geotextile landscaping fabric on top of that just to kind of stop the soil actually falling down through it and i'm actually using an organic potting mix in this terrarium because uh, i really want the plants to to thrive in this one and i want it to be really lush and really green so it gives something for the roots to really get into before i go any further though something i'm going to do is i'm going to put my thermostat probe inside the terrarium because i'm about to actually physically screw the lid shut using some timber i'll show you what i mean in a sec but uh, my thermostats of choice, this one's a little bit dirty, is just the um, the old classic dimming thermostats by Habistat. I love Habistat thermostats, they're just, they're just foolproof. You know, I don't need any of this technical stuff day and night and all the rest of it. You know, you can chuck these things on a timer and they're still gonna be able to be fine wherever you left them. 
So I'm just going to run the cord down through there because uh, my heat panel is probably going to sit over this side of the terrarium here. Anyway, so I've got that in place now. I'm going to chuck the, the roof back on. I'm going to get some screws ready. I'm actually going to drill a few of these timbers down into place. You would have seen this in quite a few of my videos probably. Um, this time for this this side, what I'm doing is I'm actually using it to uh, pin the backing in place. Just want to make sure I get a bit of a firm grip on it. But yeah, I'm going to use these to just hold this in a position. Another good reason why I'm screwing these into place is it gives me somewhere to actually mount the um, the horizontal perches off. So I'm just going to cut them to size and actually zip tie them into place in this. But it also means, well, it also kind of gives the, the illusion that you've got tree branches or tree trunks that are actually coming down into the ground. Quite often these little guys they actually get seen from you know hanging hanging above just above the the ground level hunting for little skinks and stuff like that and in particular when they're juveniles not so much when they're adults but even still they still come down to the ground just to kind of forage around for any any rodents or anything that's kind of getting about i'm gonna do this one I don't want to make it look too too much the same on both sides or anything like that, so I might put this one back up here somewhere. Maybe like that. Should be okay there too. Beautiful. So this part's going to be a little bit more difficult, but essentially I'm just going to zip tie a couple of these little perches into place and figure out how I'm going to do it I like that The other thing I'm going to do while I'm in here, while I've got that first perch on, is grab my thermostat probe. I'm actually just going to zip tie it into place as well over here, right to the top of the perch where that heat, heat panel is going to be sitting above. I'm going to come back after I've got these perches all in place and uh, cut the zip ties.
got the enclosure in place. Need to snip another couple of cable ties because I've gone through and put a couple of extra vines in there. And I'm pretty much ready for planting. I've hooked up the Miss King to it. So it's got the tube running right across there. Got a beautiful T5 in there, so it should be able to give the plants heaps of growth. But uh, yeah, I'll crack into it. I've got a whole bunch of plants to show you. We'll start putting some of them in and uh, get this underway. So I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to use all of these yet. I've got a big pothos vine that's come out of his old enclosure and uh, picked up a bunch of these little guys today as well just to kind of hopefully do a lot more of the front filling in and stuff. I've also got a little ivy I believe there. Ivy? I'm pretty sure, yeah, it's a little ivy. Yeah, a couple of little bird's nest ferns. I think that's a little peace lily and uh, it's a little ground cover plant, that one. But yeah. I'm just going to chuck the time lapse on and start chucking some of this stuff in and just see how we go. getting a little bit late here. I'm uh, pretty much ready to call it quits. It's probably about 10 o'clock at night now. This little guy wants to get back into his enclosure and I need to start packing up and going to bed and ready for work tomorrow. But uh, yeah, she's all done. Looking fantastic too. So I forgot to mention that I've got that uh, stag horn there as well. One of my friends gave me that. Yeah, we've got a couple of little ferns, little uh, bird's nest ferns. A little peace lily as well. I pretty much crammed all the pothots into the back there. It doesn't look fantastic now, but you know, give it a couple of weeks and when all the leaves bounce back, they'll all be facing up and looking nice. Um, yeah, we've just got a little bit of a dead palm frond in there. I kind of like that look in there. You know, it's got to be a little bit of death in the rainforest as well. All the, de the decaying matter as well. I need to get a different water bowl because at the moment I'm just using a uh, a cheap cereal bowl and have been for quite a while for this guy but um nonetheless i'm gonna get him in and let him explore his new home so this is the gorgeous little wasabi Let's see if i can <laughs> he's just gonna do what he wants to do i don't actually know if it's a he so yeah we'll let him let him or her explore his new environment and I'll see if I can get some shots of him perched a little bit later on. Thanks for sticking around and watching the video guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to drop us a like, subscribe to the channel if you really enjoyed it and turn on the notification bell and we'll see you in the next build. Cheers.